Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, delighted to uh, talk about uh, our GROW project, which is about wireless sensors for smart farming applications in uh, horticulture. Now, first, um, when we talk about horticulture, I want to stress uh, two things. Um, you can see on this graph the yields of uh, tomato production, greenhouse uh, tomato production. And um, what you notice is that um, the, um, the leading producers are actually the Netherlands and Belgium, if you look at the yield, the amount of uh, tons per hectare that can be produced in a greenhouse in uh, Belgium and the Netherlands is uh, the highest in the world. However, if you look at the amount of production um, that they produce, uh, they are definitely not the world leaders uh, with respect to the uh, total amount of production. This is for Italy and Spain. So basically what this um, graph shows is that um, in Belgium and Netherlands, uh, greenhouse production is highly efficient. Huh? On a low, on a limited amount of space, we are able to produce quite a lot of uh, fruits. And most of it is because of uh, many um, horticultural innovations. And you see on this slide several examples. Huh? So the introduction of LED lights, diffuse glass, robotics, uh, efficient heating systems, uh, even uh, tomato vaccines uh, against uh, certain uh, viruses. Um, several ap um, robot applications and even drone applications are uh, now um, emerging in um, greenhouses. But I wonder what about the sensors? Huh? Here you can see a very nice example of a huge greenhouse compartment that basically has only one sensor in the middle. Uh, we call this often the, the, the central um, climate box. Huh? Um, and this is a typical um, um, weather station, a small weather station that records temperature, humidity, and maybe other uh, parameters. So for this huge greenhouse, we only have one uh, sensor module that will regulate the entire climate of the greenhouse. So we think this is quite limited, and this is where actually the GROW project kicks in. Uh, we wanted to develop um, a lot of um, um, cheap um, sensors that we can place all over in the greenhouse to, to, to create a very dense sensor network. And the, the idea is that all these sensors are wireless and that they are interconnected and that all the data gets, um, gets loaded into the cloud where the farmer can actually use the data to get more insight about the climate in his or her greenhouse. So we want to introduce the Internet of Things um, applications into the greenhouse. Now the GROW project is an uh, Interreg funded project um, between uh, Belgium and the south of the Netherlands. Um, here you can see all the different uh, partners that are involved. Uh, we have IMAC and TNO who are big in sensor development. We collaborate with Hassel School, LTO Graskrecht in Nederland. Uh, we do experiments in the proof Centrum in Hoogstraten um, and um, University of Antwerp is taking care of the wireless connectivity. While at KU Leuven, we are developing um, the plant models and we do, we're doing the data analysis and the Flemish Center of Post-Harvest um, and Technology is taking care of uh, the quality of the fruits that are harvested. Now I'll catch you through our experimental setup, what we have been doing. So first of all, we are developing, um, um, we are developing different uh, cheap sensors to measure several uh, parameters, um, such as temperature, relative humidity, electrical conductivity, uh, lights, and even individual nutrients. Some of these sensors, they are already um, ready, um, ready for the market, while others are still in development. Um, we validate these sensors with more um, industry or analytical sensors. Um, and then we will create a high dense sensor networks in our experimental stations in the greenhouses where we can link the sensor data with um, the plant uh, data. Here you can see an example of a new sensor which we've developed is an airflow box that has a natural gradient of air flowing through the box um, that passes along the sensor so we can have an accurate um, estimation of uh, the temperature and relative humidity in the surrounding of the plants. Okay. Um, the second thing is that when we have these sensors, we need to connect them all together. And this is done by an Octaboard platform. This platform allows you to connect multiple sensors in one uh, module. And these can be transmitted locally in the greenhouse to a LoRaWAN gateway, um, which then uses uh, the LoRaWAN network to um, transfer all the data into the clouds. And this way we can have a lot of information within one greenhouse. And even we can think about the future 
uh, where we can even connect the data from multiple greenhouses all coming together in the cloud using this uh, connectivity system. Then we have built a cloud-based dashboard. Uh, this dashboard allows you to, sh to see um, in real time what the different sensors are recording. Uh, here you can see a print screen, uh, you can see temperature, you, um, irradiance, light, uh, humidity, um, and you can see multiple lines re representing different uh, sensors. And you are also able to go back in time to see what was the profile from let's say last week or last month. So it's a very intuitive and very flexible uh, dashboard. And then, of course, this dashboard uh, contains a lot of data. Uh, and this is often the bottleneck in uh, smart farming where you have so much data. So uh, we have been building databases and we have been uh, working on custom-made algorithms in order to process the data. And then eventually, um, we want to take it a step further. And instead of just uh, having the data, we want to actually use the data to build some um, models. Uh, so we are building currently some fruit models and some plant models that are actually based on the uh, physiology and the biochemistry of the plant. So it, it takes into account many different physiological processes that are occurring in, in the fruit and in the plant, such as photosynthesis, transpiration, respiration, and so on. And um, based on these mathematical equations, uh, we can predict how these processes are changing and we can actually even make yield predictions. And these yield predictions, they will depend on the external conditions such as temperature, light, CO2, or even water and nutrient availability. As such, we are developing a digital twin, uh, which is uh, basically a digital copy of a real plant. And this will allow us to make uh, yield predictions. Now I'll get you over some of our results um, and I will fo focus in this talk only on uh, the results of temperature. So just to give you an idea, uh, this is a temperature profile of a greenhouse compartment uh, over uh, several months uh, uh, from August uh, to November uh, 2018. What you can see in red is basically the temperature profile over time of this central uh, sensor or the central Priva box. While in gray, you can see all the different temperature profiles of all the different sensors, sensors that we have placed in our um, sensor network. So you see there's quite a lot of variation between the central sensor and all the other sensors in the network. Um, on certain occasions, you can observe differences uh, between one to two degrees uh, Celsius, which does not seem to be a lot, but if you accumulate this on a season, this was really um, quite a big difference. So we can also integrate this uh, information and to create these heat maps that give you more of the temporal and spatial uh, resolution of the microclimate in the greenhouse. What you can see here are, um, is actually a, a heat map where all the individual black dots represent different sensors from our sensor network. And um, the colors represent different temperatures. So you can see here that there is a region in the greenhouse where it is slightly warmer and that there is a region in the greenhouse where it is slightly cooler. And you can create, you can, as a, as a grower, you can see basically where in your greenhouse you have these uh, gradients, these temperature gradients, and this is something that's uh, valuable to know. Because we've also noticed that uh, maybe those uh, small uh, temperature differences, uh, those local microclimate differences uh, based on, on a full season, uh, you can see that uh, the, the blue line is representing the region that was slightly cooler and the red line is the region that was slightly larger. But if you translate this into yield, you can see that the red light always produces slightly higher yields compared to um, the blue line, uh, which are the plants that are um, growing slightly cooler microclimate. So these uh, small differences in microclimate, they are actually uh, leading to significant yield differences. So this is, in our opinion, justification um, to um, start developing uh, more of those uh, dense sensor networks in greenhouse. Then I'll get you through to some of our results on which we want to use that uh, sensor data in order to predict uh, fruit and uh, plant development by using these uh, micro um, models. Um, basically, what we want to predict on uh, a fruit is how it develops. Uh, and we will use temperature and relative humidity from our sensor data as an input. And we will have underlying um, biological processes such as transpiration and respiration in order to predict basically the um, fruit mass and um, the dry uh, content of the fruit. 
what you can see on these graphs is um, the fruit developmental profile. Um, the dots are the, in the observations, the actual measurements of uh, the fruits. You can see that the fruits are accumulating mass over time. And the, the line is basically the model that, uh, is, uh, that we have developed that's able to predict the fruit uh, mass over time. The same with the dry mass percentage, uh, which is an important quality parameter. Uh, you can see the dots that they are declining over time. And our model is nicely fitting through um, these uh, uh, values, indicating that we're able to um, predict the dry mass percentage. We also want to take it uh, further than the fruit. So we have tried to incorporate uh, the fruit model with a plant growth model. And this is actually done by an object oriented uh, model where we um, build small sub models for all the different compartments, such as the leaves, the stems, the trusses and the fruits. And then we kind of connect them together in order to know how um, nutrients are flowing from one object to another object in order to predict their growth and development. And of course, these uh, individual sub-objects, they are dependent on the interacting environment. Just to give you an example, um, this is the leaf area index, which is a measure that uh, says how many leaves there are on the plant. Again, you can see the dots, which are the uh, observations, the actual measurements that were done in the greenhouse. And this is again over a long, sea, a long period of, uh, of more than 20 weeks. And the, the, the black line is the model um, of us that is able to predict um, the amount of leaves uh, in the plant. You can see those scissor um, shapes here. It's because the model takes into account uh, the pruning strategy of the farmers um, when they are cutting away certain leaves. So currently we are building those different submodels, and in the future we hope to be able to connect all those different submodels so that we can create a fruit and a plant model that's interconnected. Um, we want to incorporate more environmental parameters. Uh, I've only talked about temperature, um, but we definitely want to include also the electrical conductivity um, and the uh, different nutrients available in the, in the nutrient solution. And then we will use the data that we're currently gathering in 2020 um, to validate uh, these uh, different uh, models. And then I want to use the opportunity to quickly um, also show another application of these sensors. Huh? Besides using them in greenhouses, we have also um, did a small test with our, our sensors. And you can see the airflow boxes in a, in a growing cell from a chicory forcing. Um, what we have done is we've placed some uh, sensors at the top and we've placed some sensors at the bottom in uh, these uh, chicory um, climate chambers. And we've observed that there are definitely differences also in this uh, um, um, cell. So here you can see that the average temperature of a three week um, forcing uh, period, you can see that at the bottom, the temperature was slightly um, larger compared to the top. Huh? It, it's only half a degree difference, but nonetheless, this half degree difference is actually leading to a significant yield difference where the yield at the top, where the colder chicory was actually leading to a higher uh, yield. This is just to show that uh, these type of sensors can also be introduced in different uh, uh, farming settings besides uh, greenhouses. So this brings me to my conclusions. Huh? So um, we believe that uh, a lot of uh, cheap sensors and wireless connectivity technology is already available and many more will follow in the near future but we believe that uh, the data processing and the analysis of the data is often the bottleneck. And uh, you have so much data, what can you learn from the data? How can you use the data? So that's why we think those uh, map models are very important to actually be able to um, improve your uh, production. Um, so basically, what are the benefits of such a smart um, sensor network? Uh, you will, we are able to observe microclimate differences. This will then allow the farmer to more precisely con control um, his or her growing conditions. And this will definitely lead them to re uh, reduces of yield losses or even production costs can be controlled better. And um, in, on top of that, if we could model um, yield predictions, um, this would also allow uh, the farmer to have a better uh, optimal market supply. And at the end, this will definitely lead to uh, more uh, efficiency of uh, farming. That's the end of my presentation. I want to thank you to, for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions.